Hello guys and girls, welcome back. This five one crown set was struck by the Pop Joy Mint. It commemorates the Tynewald Millennium. Tynewald or Tynewald Court is the legislator of the Isle of Man. It consists of two chambers known as the Branches of Tynewald, the directly elected House of Keys and the indirectly chosen Legislative Council. When the two, ch two chambers sit together, they become Tynewald Court. The Tynewald Millennium was celebrated in 1979, which is when these crowns were produced. They are actually in this uh, proof-like plastic case, and it has some information on the back, so you can't actually see the obverse of the coins, but they depict... Uh, Queen Elizabeth II, of course, but I'll describe those and as I do each coin. The spec of each coin is the issue is the Isle of Man, the portrait on the obverse is Elizabeth II, and it's a non circulating coin. The year is 1979, the value at the time was one crown, which is 0 0.25 of a pound, so that's 25 pence. The currency is pound, Isle of Man uh, decimalised in 1971. The composition is copper nickel. The weight is 28.28 grams. The diameter is 38.61 millimetres. And they have a milled edge. And the alignment is both straight up. The first coin features a Viking longship. The obverse, which has the Queen Elizabeth II portrait of Elizabeth II, Queen Elizabeth II, also has the lettering Isle of Man, 1979, and PM for Pop Joy Mint. The engraver is Arnold Makin, and it's the same obverse for all five coins. The Viking longship, or Snedka, uh, represents the 11th and 12th centuries. Now the Snedka of the Hiberno-Norse period, when the island was the centre of, of a great Viking empire, stretching from the Outer Hebrides to the east coast of Ireland and North Wales. The Norse hero Godred Crovan, son of Harold the Black of Iceland, defeated the Manx king Fingal II in 1079 and established the dynasty that ruled till 1290. He is portrayed in the prow of the ship. The galley is based on that of a gogster of the same period, now preserved in Sweden. Tynewald was founded a century earlier and is represented by Tynewald Hill, shown in the inset cartouche. The 13th and 14th centuries are represented by the English cog ship and the cogs traded throughout the North Sea, Celtic and Baltic Seas and in the background is Castle Russian which came into prominence in the 13th and 14th century when uh, Scottish and English had uh, seized um, the Isle of Man. Castle Russian was captured by Robert the Bruce, King of Scots in 1313 but the island was restored to English rule in sorry, 1333-34. The 15th and 16th centuries are represented by a Flemish carrack, spelled C-A-R-R-A-C-K, of the 15th century. This sturdy vessel was the forerunner of the galleon and usually had three masts. The bow sprite was greatly extended and these ships had a characteristic deep sheer fore and aft curvature were clinker built and had rows of gun ports. Square sails were carried on the foremast and mainmast. In the background is St Michael's Island near the present Ronald, Ronaldsway Airport where Sir John Stanley, Lord of Man, codified the laws of the island in 1429. To the left and to the right you can see Derby Fort and St Michael's Chapel. The 17th and 18th 
18th centuries are represented by a man of war and a soldier of the Civil War period. The ship was based on the Sovereign of the Seas, built by King Charles I in 1637. She was 1,522 tonnes, with a keel length of 127 feet and a beam of 48 and a half feet. The Isle of Man played a conspicuous part in the Civil War. James, Earl of Derby and Lord of Man, was captured after the Battle of Worcester in 1651 and executed at Bolton. His wife continued to hold the, hold the island in the name of King Charles II till man was betrayed to the Commonwealth by William Christian. At the Restoration in 1660, the Derby family returned to power and took their revenge on William Christian, who was found guilty of treason and shot at Hango Mount near Castletown in 1661. The 19th and 20th centuries are represented by a 19th century Manx lifeboat going to the aid of a ship in distress. A portrait of Sir William Hillary is in set. The lifeboat movement had its beginnings in the Isle of Man. Sir William Hillary founded the Royal National Life Lifeboat Institution, the world's premier life-saving organisation for shipwrecked mariners, and in 1832 he built the Tower of Refuge, which is such a prominent landmark in Douglas Bay. <laughs>